Welcome to Let's Talk Near Death, the podcast show where we talk about life, death, and experiences somewhere in between. My name is Kirsty Salisbury, the host of the show, and I welcome you to join me as I talk to everyday people with not so everyday experiences. You may also wish to join the conversation on the Let's Talk Near Death Facebook page or access additional VIP content as a premium subscriber via Patreon. For just a couple of dollars a month, you can get an early access to episodes, additional bonus content, and your chance to connect with my guests. To do so, simply visit patreon.com forward slash Kirsty Salisbury. Let's talk near death. I can see myself, I can see Mr. Newton and other nurses trying to resuscitate me. And then I'm floating above myself, three beings. Uh, I, f- I felt like they came towards me from the left hand side. And then the next thing I was uh, introduced was to, was to have a life with you. Welcome back to the Let's Talk Near Death podcast. Today I'm talking with Paul Northridge, who's based in the UK. Paul is author of Walk of Life, Feet on the Ground, and also host of the popular YouTube channel, Unite Planet. Paul has had multiple surgeries in his life, some of which have taken him right to the brink of death, and one surgery which stands out in particular, which took him through to a near-death experience and then returning back completely changed. Paul, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about what was going on in your life, how these surgeries took place, and then through to your near-death experience. Well, thank you for having me on for the uh, programme. By the way, I'm very delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, with, with me, um, basically I was born with uh, spine bifida, uh, which is uh, a problem with uh, a defect of the spine. Um, so when I was born, I had a hole in my back about the uh, size of uh, wow. like a two pence, uh, two pence piece in English money. So quite, quite big uh, hole yeah. in my back. Um, so the issue was then, uh, as soon as I popped out to my mum, they just had a brief cuddle with me and then off to emergency operations because I was losing a lot of blood. And uh, so I basically almost died at that point because I was really, really weak. And uh, they said that, yeah, Paul's really, you know, really bad and needs to be operated on now. Mm-hmm. And um, so as soon as that was done, um, then a new issue started. Uh, not long after the um, back was sewn up, hydrocephalus uh, began to uh, form on my brain. So my brain was getting quite large because hydrocephalus, I don't know how it works co- completely. I'll be honest with you, I'm not technical on these things. I'm not, I'm not medical. Yeah. Uh, but as I understand it, hydrocephalus is like a fluid that needs to come in and out, like a circulation. But because of the uh, the hole in my back wasn't out out and more releasing the fluid, it was going back into my brain and then swell, swelling my brain up. Yeah. So my brain was twice as big, not as intelligent, uh-huh. but twice as big. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um, so then it got to to the point where my parents were panicking, doctors were panicking, and uh, so the doctor said. We, we got to operate again on Paul, and um, so they decided to do a the shunt operation. So it's like a metal frame, pins, and like a way to fluid drain the fluid out. I'm not again technical, uh-huh. but it's some kind of a device to, to fluid drain the fluid. So as they're doing that, um, well, as they're preparing for that, um, my parents said, "Okay, well, let's get him baptized." And uh, they said, okay, yeah, let's get him baptized. So I got baptized, and overnight, um, the operation was due actually in the morning, overnight my brain started to go back to normal shape. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so the, the, I've never heard of it before until about 19, until, until I picked in about, about 40 something, because I asked questions about it, and I said, has ever anybody else had this? Because I thought it's quite a mis- mysterious kind of thing. And it, it, maybe there has been people because it's called arrested hydrocephalus. So maybe people, people have had it and it just suddenly stops. So again, was it um, baptism that, that caused it? Or was it normal? Not, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, mm. uh, I'm not, I'm, I asked many questions about that. I don't know, but uh, mm. it's just very weird. It, it, it did happen anyway. Um, mm. So 
that's my beginning of, of my of my life. Uh, had many operations uh, from to the age of sixteen. I had fourteen major operations. So mm. yeah, yeah, fourteen. So most of my um, most of my summer breaks from school, I ended up in in hospital. Uh, so I had six weeks holiday, but in plaster most of the oh, time. Oh no, yeah. So yeah, it is what it is. You know, I'm not. Uh, you know, I mean, I I, I could actually I wasn't. Um, as a kid growing up, I wasn't uh, having many friends because of my problems with walking. The, some some children found it hard to associate with me. So I wasn't uh, that connecting well with friends too well at the time. So anyway, so it wasn't bothering me too much. I wasn't put out with friends or anything like that. But um, yeah, I still was quite a daredevil. I was uh, quite uh, on a scooter. I was uh, bombing down on, on a little scooter when I, was, yeah. uh, when I was 11 years old. I fell off my scooter. Broke my kneecap. My kneecap was broken. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so another, another six weeks in plaster. Terrible. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway. The last thing you need. Exactly. So, anyway. um, so it gets to my then uh, 14. I had another operation. And uh, this one is basically a operation where they're going to lengthen my leg. So it's called a Verona operation because my left leg was better than my right leg because of the spine bifida. And my right leg wasn't growing as fast, so they decided that the Verona operation is like um, it's it's basically putting two pins and then other two pins on my thigh bone, is it tibia, fibia, I, a bone anyway, and then break the bone in between the two pins, two lots of pins, break the bone right in the middle, and then with with the fixator device they put uh, like a little uh, plastic device that then had a key on it, so my dad then could turn this this key. And the leg will lengthen oh. every day, stretch it. It's like pulling the, the, the break of the bone apart yeah. day by day. Um, was that so that super was, painful? Um, a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like ow. It wasn't. It was, it's not the worst pain I've ever experienced. Um, but it was. It was sore, and the and the pins of my leg were very very sore. My mum had to clean the the pins around the pins every day with oh. like um, disinfectant, clean, mm -hmm. make sure it's clean. And mm. that was ow, 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 every day. And mm. I was like, Mom, can we just have a day off today? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was one of those things. But um, so when I was going in for that operation, that was when I had my, uh, my near-death experience. So what happened was for me, with me was that um, I came into the theatre. And I'm obviously, I'm a seasoned veteran by then. I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah, another operation. That's, you know, uh -huh. I'm, Chatting to the nurses, I'm I'm 14. I'm uh, getting my hormones, and I go like, "How are you doing?" And yeah. you know, trying to chat them up a little bit. Uh -huh. And uh, so I'm I'm chatting with them, and uh, anyway, so they put this uh, medicine into me uh, called a muscle relaxant. Um, it has a certain name of it. I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, so they gave me this muscle relaxant, and it was designed to relax the muscle on the on the thigh. So they could do these pins in and yada yada yada. So they, I'm waiting then on on the bed for that to go in and then to have the anaesthetic to go to sleep in. So again, I'm waiting for that. But as I'm waiting for that to happen, uh, I'm feeling pain in my body. I'm feeling like really discomfort, horrible discomfort. I couldn't figure out why I was feeling that, but my hands felt really really painful. So I raised my hands up and I thought, oh my goodness, red, swollen, big hands. And I said, Mr. Newton, my, my surgeon, Mr. Newton, look at this. And, and as he's like turning around to see me, that was it, out. I was, wow. I, I was out. And, and uh, But the, the amount of pain that I was getting, it wasn't to the point where I was thinking, I'm going to die here. It wasn't uh, a, a panic of, I was just like panicking like, Mr. Newton, allergy, hello. You know, that was the general feeling of it. And um, so as I'm next thing I'm out, then I feel like a, like a blackness for a moment. It wouldn't say how long for, but I think time doesn't really exist in, in that bit now. Um, so it felt a like, a, like, the, like, like the light bulbs went off for a second. And then I'm floating above myself, not exactly below myself, it's more like an angle. Um, so I'm like looking, um, I can see myself, I can see Mr. Newton and other nurses trying to resuscitate me. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, okay, that's me, that's my surgeon, that's my you know, staff that's trying to help me. 
But again, I wasn't. I was in car. I was. I was very calm. I wasn't uh, panicking. Um, just thinking very surreal. But uh, yeah, it was just very wondering what's happening, what's going on. Uh, moment. And as I'm doing that, three beings. Uh, I, f- I felt like they came towards me from the left hand side. Uh, as I'm looking at this, you know, down. I'm like towards the angle of down and to the right. So towards the left, it felt like three beings of light came to me and uh, I felt like I knew them and that they knew me and there was a lot of love and connection going off here uh-huh. and um, they're basically saying to me you know let's go away from there now you've, you've seen that in let's try and come away from there I said okay because again I felt this warmth I felt so much love and connection with them I felt yeah okay I want to go with them um, I didn't feel like I needed to look at that anymore and uh, yeah, I went off, went off to this next level. It's like a, as soon as I agreed to go away, off I went, and it wasn't like a, like I'm flying to the next level or anything like that. I just landed in next next realm. Mm. And um, yeah, so in the next realm, it's um, almost like being shown around still by these three beings, um, introduced me to to the place. Um, and again, I felt like I, I almost felt uh, home back in this place mm. and uh, I'm feeling like yeah um, calm um, just loving look being around here uh, but felt very very at peace there um, and then I'm, I'm seeing um, souls playing there were those souls um, like uh, having games of something like almost like chasing after a ball of light like a tennis football kind of game catch or something I don't know but there's flying it's like a um, realm of like a land and the, and the air but without anything in between it's, it's it's very I can't describe it to you uh-huh. it, yeah it's, it's without words for me but anyway I'm seeing like they're telling me that yeah they're, they're, they're playing and uh, I'm like, okay they're having fun and then I saw like another area where some souls were having treatment to re-energize themselves uh, like it almost in, like in a booth situation light going off and um, just basically re-energizing themselves getting better after some some kind of traumatic experiences that they had um, so nothing was interrupting them at all and um, and then the next thing I was uh, introduced was to was to have a life review and uh, the life review was uh, amazing um, it wasn't amazing. I say from the from the time I had my my near death experience to twenty something, it just felt like a weird surreal dream. I thought, oh, that was just crazy. I never really mm. remember dreams, but I remember that one and that stayed with me. But I just thought it was a weird dream. Um, anyway, so I thought that was very very surreal what I saw. But in the near death experience, sorry, in the re- in the review, I saw. Um, past, present, future, all in, in like instant. It's, it's like, yeah. uh, it's not like done in like sections so much, in my, in my, in my opinion. It's almost like everything at once. Um, so in the past uh, side of things, um, because uh, I'll give you instances um, that I saw. I saw uh, a previous life or death even, a previous mm-hmm. death. Um, where um, I was, uh, it's like uh, Greek or Roman or something like that kind of a thing going off. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a life of that. I just saw the death of it where I'm falling onto spikes or a oh. person is, is falling onto spikes. Yeah. Um, but again, it wasn't uh, like, um, I can describe to you, it's not like a feeling of pain or anything like that. It wasn't going like out, out, out or anything like that. It was just more like a feeling of uh, telling me that you're reincarnated here. I'm thinking, okay, so that's what I got off it in my in my in my mind. So I saw a previous life. I saw then me as a youngster. I mean, I'm only 14 then, but I saw myself not doing too well in school. Um, for example, I was bullied a lot in school because of my mm. issues. I went, I went to a normal school with normal normal ex people, and I was the only one with disabilities. Mm-hmm. So some kids didn't know how to treat me very well. Mm, exactly. So. The, yeah, and I got bullied a lot, and uh, so because I was bullied a lot, I wanted them for a short period of time change it around a little bit. I want to be the bully, and I bullied for a short while, but I did. And, you know, I wasn't. I'm not mm. proud of it. 
mm. I did. But, I'm, I'm, but I think it's just to get like a power back in myself to feel like, yeah, I'm powerful and better and stronger. Mm. Learning. Anyway, so I bullied a little bit. And um, so whilst I'm in this life review, I remember feeling that um, whatever they felt, confusion, pain, all that kind of thing, I felt it. I felt their their pain during this life review. And I thought, uh, okay, you know, that's what that, 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 that talked with, with me as well. I felt like we're same, sharing the same consciousness, same mm. source. Mm. Um, so that, that was very important to me. Uh, and then, so the next, the next bit I saw was um, like my parents. I could see, I could see my parents uh, in the kitchen uh, because I'm a, a person asked me, you know, why was your parents in the kitchen? Because they, why wasn't they in in the hospital with you? And I'm, I'm basically saying, explaining, well, I am quite an experienced person in hospitals. At yeah. 14, I would have said, you know, go, go, you know, I'll, I'll tell you when I'm out. I'm quite independent. I was quite mm. mature, a uh, fourteen-year-old. I was very, very mature. I was, I was fourteen, going on forty already. Yeah, you know, was, you're probably oh, thrown into that. To be fair, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, I, I feel like um, that, that's a very important thing. I felt like I, I almost like chose this life. I, I, uh-huh. I generally believe I, I, I would, I would say that I chose to have this experience for, for to help people eventually. That's why mm-hmm. that's why I'm going to with the, with yourself and just trying to really help people. Mm. and explain what it's all about because some people are very very scared of dying and uh, yeah. what it's all about and I, I, I just want to help you know that's that's the whole purpose of it really mm, love it. so yeah um so i'm seeing a life review and i'm seeing my mum and dad in the kitchen and and i can actually feel their thoughts and feelings saying like really excited to see paul after this operation well now it's going and uh, all this kind of thing all these chatterbots going in their, in their heads and uh, preparing this food for me because, you know, they want to make me happy when I, when I come out of hospital, mm. you know, to the, the, you know, they want to make, you know, some chocolate strawberries that they made for me or whatever, you know, they, they want to make me happy. Uh, so I felt that emotion whilst I was there. And then I saw Future, which is, and again, um, this has only become more um, more important to me as I get, as I get older. Because mm. when, I, when I was 14, like I say, I didn't even see myself driving. I got, myself, I got myself thinking, yeah. disabled? Nah, you don't want to drive. You've got to be taxied. And I thought, yeah. So when I was in this part, I could see myself driving. And I thought, you know, if, you know, at, at 14, I thought this is a, a weird dream. But why am I seeing myself driving? Don't know. Why mm. am I seeing myself flying over Russia? Don't know. Um, anyway, so years go by, I passed my driving test. I'm thinking like, right. yeah, and the feelings of ecstatic and those kind of thing, you know, maybe it was that moment. I don't know if it was that moment, but I, I remember the feeling of like, yes, I'm driving. And uh, yeah, so I don't, but I didn't really connect it because like 20 something, I watched a documentary to say near death experiences happen like this. I thought, ah, oh, that happened to me. Mm. But, you know, but by 18, I was driving already, so it didn't really connect to me too much. Um, so I saw myself flying over Russia. I think like, why am I seeing myself flying over Russia? I eventually married a Russian lady. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's just, yeah. Uh, but I didn't, but I didn't, I saw also a ceremony because you see very important parts of your life uh, in life reviews, I feel. Um, and um, I saw a ceremony going off in, in Russia. But it wasn't a white wedding. It wasn't because I, I always envisioned myself as a if, if I get married to somebody, white wedding, traditional, you know, big church, mm. the whole mm. shebang. And I thought, hmm, I didn't see myself get, you know, as years go by, I thought, if it was an edit experience, how come I didn't see myself getting married? Anyway, so I've got then see my, uh, my wife and myself got married actually in a restaurant office in Russia. She wasn't right. wearing a white dress. She wore a blue dress um, because she got married before. Because she didn't, and so therefore she didn't want a white white dress in that time. She wanted right, to wear, yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking like now it makes it makes sense to me. So I didn't see, I saw a ceremony, but I didn't I didn't see what it was exactly and why it was because it wasn't a traditional wedding in my 14 year old's mind. Uh-huh. Um, so that that I saw as well and. Um, so after the life review, um, and then I saw like uh, almost like an ed- like an education type of thing, 
and I wish they took it more in of this because it, it, it and I'll be asking some some help uh, later on if, if possible from yourselves or your yeah. viewers. Um, so what I, the reason why I'm asking for that is because I would like to get regressed. I would like to get hypnotized back. Okay. Yeah. And that's the reason why I want to also ask for help because I, I think it's some important information in there that I'd like to get yeah. out a lot more because yeah. I almost like closed certain levels after 14 years of age thinking like surreal, surreal dream, cut off, cut off. It's not uh -huh. anything personal. Yeah. So I had an, ex an experience of education and I would like love to hear that again in my, if I, could, if I got regressed, I'd like to hear that again. So you're talking education, you were given some education in your near-death experience? Yeah. You were taught something? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the bits I remember of it was like um, cats and dogs um, and their consciousness. I was, I was taught okay. that and that, that stuck in my brain. Um, there was like, uh, the reason why dogs are here, uh, they're here to like love unconditionally, that they're here to help people. Um, and then I saw then the, uh, that cats were, uh, uh, when they were purring, they're like giving us like colours uh, to the owners to like give them love. And yeah, I, I felt that. So wow. that's, but I saw it, I saw it. And I saw like yeah. uh, also tree, um, like energy going in, energy going out of, of, of this tree. Like um, there's a film called Lucy with Scarlett Johansson. And uh, where she has her DNA fully opened up, and she can see everything like a hologram almost. It felt like oh, that okay. situation, and she saw energy going in, energy going out of trees. I thought that's what I saw. <laughs> wow! Oh, that must yeah. have been amazing. It, it was. It was. I mean, like I say I wish I took it in a lot more. But again, I say I had a delete button up there sometimes. I got a delete button for everything. You know, mm. I can't remember mm. names sometimes. It's terrible. You know. mm. So relate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically, um, so after I had this um, education of trees, energy connection, all that kind of thing, um, then I was um, sharing like a light, and it almost like said to me, uh, Paul, do you want to, you know, you got a choice really, basically, come back to where you are and see your parents and your family and all that thing, or do you want to stay here? And then you'll, you know, I don't know what happens next, really, to actually, or do you want to stay here, basically? That was the options. Mm -hmm. So as I've seen this light, uh, it's a uh, warm light, um, bright light, of course, which everyone describes, you know, it's like, almost like circulating almost at the time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm thinking, no, I'm, I'm still young, I'm 14. Uh, I've got lots to learn still, and uh, I want to go back. And it's almost like an encouragement to go back. I was almost like told, you know, warmly enough to say you know really you are you are quite young go back you know and i felt i felt like yeah you're you're right i agree yeah I, you know mm -hmm. so it was almost like a comprehension of yeah let's let's agree together i'm going back and mm -hmm. i woke up um in hospital in in my ward uh full of energy right uh, yeah honestly it was like um i almost like describe it as like you know when when scrooge wakes up from his three ghosts yeah or four ghosts whatever it was um that yeah he was like oh my god i'm alive let's you know and i felt like that and like tell everybody about it and because mm -hmm. i thought that was just a weird dream and I, and I said to my parents i've had the weirdest dream when they came to see me and i'm like i've had the weirdest dream and like yeah, yeah, yeah and i told them what it was you know and they're like mm, okay <laughs> you yeah. know let's change subjects but um then my, my surgeon came round with my parents uh, to, to see my parents and myself at, at, at the bed. And Mr. Newton, my surgeon, said, uh, unfortunately, we had to resuscitate Paul. He had a really, really bad rea uh, reaction to this uh, medicine that we gave him. Um, and there's a big breast sticker on my folder uh, saying, do not give this patient this because he has a severe allergy to it. Um, and yeah, we had to, to, we had to bring back Paul back. So it, it was proven that uh, I don't know how long I was out for. I'll be honest with you, no, no questions were, as far as I'm aware, was asked how long I was out for, but mm. but I know I know it, it happened, especially when I could associate other people's experiences at uh, this documentary I saw, and, um, I said I was 20 something, early 20s, and I thought, yeah, I, I concur with that. Mm. 
Was that the first time that you realised when you're watching this documentary that you had had a near-death experience? Yes, that was that was the that was the real re realization of it. Yeah, um, I thought it was just a very surreal dream, vivid, um, but it had a lot. Of, it, it did have an impact on me because dreams don't stay with me. Dreams usually just mm. you know next day gone. Mm. You know they don't mm. they don't stay with me. But that one has, and even now I'm 47 and. Yeah, I could still vision things in my head. Wow. Wow. Wow, Paul, thank you so much. That is such a beautiful recollection of your experience. It's absolutely amazing because there's so many different elements in it. I do have a bunch of questions. Okay, and go. Yeah, far away. You know, I can't even remember the first one, to be honest. But going back, so... The, uh, the reaction kicked into the medicine mm -hmm. and then you said that you were suddenly in another place. So you held up your hands, they were red, they were swollen, you talked to the doctor and then you were suddenly in another place. Mm -hmm. Were you still connected to your body? Like I know that you were looking down on your body and you were aware that that was you, but did you feel any connection? Uh, I would say, totally I would say more... Uh, I'll say more like uh, disassociated, if I'm honest with you. I just want like a feeling of that's me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, thinking like, oh my goodness, I want to go back in there. Nothing like that. It's like bring me back to my body, you know. And I couldn't see any. Some people talk about like a cord between yourself and, the, yeah. and, and myself. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't see it. Didn't see that. Wow, it's no. amazing. And then you talked about these three beings of light that came, how they were familiar, mm. but did. Did you know who they were or they just felt familiar? Just felt familiar. Um, they, they don't have facial features. Uh, and mm. I feel like I, I felt like maybe I was partly that as well or, or was the same because when I came into this realm, everybody was almost was the same, I would say. Uh, I can't remember seeing any actual faces at all in, in, this, mm. in this realm. It's more like uh, beings of, of light and souls. Mm. Um, so... I almost liken it to um, I will um, after this um, video chat with you, with you. I'll send you a picture of what I saw uh, because I, I met up with a lovely artist um, doing what I do now. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more later about what I do now. Uh -huh. And I met up with a lovely artist, um, an English artist uh, called uh, called uh, Lloyd Canning, and um, he uh, drew a painting and uh, he's done many many paintings. But when he hold, held up this one painting to show to me, I'm thinking like, that is exactly what I saw wow. in my experience. It's almost like he painted what I saw. And uh -huh. um, so as I'm looking at it, it's like um, shape of a head, uh, shape of shoulders, and then almost like a light. You can just stand, but it's almost translucent, translucent, white, light, shape. Yeah. Um, floating, no, not walking, floating, not, not, you know, mm. nothing like, a, a, you know, legs. If I can see legs, yeah. And, yeah, and 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 being without legs myself, I was thinking like, this is quite cool, you know. This is, you know, being as attached to my my legs for a while, it, it felt like, yeah, nice, free. Yeah, that must have felt amazing. And actually, that was my next question: was as you're with these walls of light, and then. You talked about how you thought about leaving and going to the next place that you were suddenly there. Were you aware of your physical body or were you now a ball of light as well? Or you don't know? I, th I think I was more the same as them. I feel like I was just, it was just my natural, my natural self was my soul. Mm. Mm. Um, so I feel like, yeah, I was the same. What I saw of them was, was me also. I, I didn't mm. feel like I was uh, looking like me at all in you know, face. I didn't have, I'm sure I didn't have any face. I didn't see a mirror, but uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. But I saw uh, basically these these beings, and um, in the next realm, same looking beings. So I'm thinking, yeah, I must have been the same, definitely the same. Mm. Any idea of how many other beings in this next realm? It was like a, a city. It was almost oh, like okay, yeah. So many going off, you know, yeah. and lots yeah. of uh, lots of lots of things going off. Really, there was, um, yeah, it's almost like um, I saw. Um, there's, do you know who were the um, the author Dolores Cannon? Um, yes, yes. She's, yeah, 
she she basically um, I read about the tapestry, uh, that, and, I, I, and when I read about that, I thought, I'm pretty much sure I saw a lot of tapestry as well of like um, beings, you know, of of uh, what's it called of of people's stories woven in this in this thing, and uh, yeah, and I felt I felt like that when I was in here that there was like a like a library type thing, and I saw beings in this library as well. It was like almost like rooms, segments. It wasn't rooms. Yeah, it was just areas, and uh, yeah. But yeah, it was no like I couldn't see like plants or rivers or anything like that. It wasn't uh, like an earth uh-huh. type of thing, I would say. Um, yeah, just very. I can't describe. We should describe it here. And that, that's why I want to get. You know, I want to get re- regressed, and I can see more. I would then describe it so much more clearly. Yeah, exactly. And I think so much of it is indescribable because from what I've heard and from the research I've done, even things like colours, they don't exist on this realm. They don't exist here. So when we're talking about things a lot bigger than a colour, how on earth do you give that words? How do you put any kind of concept to that? So that's quite a common thing I do here is that it was literally indescribable because we are so limited by our vocabulary, but also by what we see and experience around earth i suppose yeah Absolutely. Agree oh, it's beautiful it's amazing okay um you've really got me because my mind was going crazy and now i've forgotten them all <laughs> that's this okay, is what to me. life with a no, brain that's... injury but you know it's okay oh. <laughs> but i love these stories i love how similar they are and actually when you were talking about the um the tree with the different vibrations and then you're talking about the painting and somebody had painted your experience. It's another thing that I do hear a lot of is people will paint things or they'll come up with a concept and then someone who's had an NDE can actually go back and relate to that, even though the person who created it or came up with that concept hasn't experienced anything like it. It's just something that pops into their brain. And I think yeah. there's got to be some element of divine interconnection there where they're given that because somehow down the track it's going to have an impact to somebody somewhere at some time. I think, it's ama- I think the whole way everything's interlinked is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Synchronicity. Synchronicity is, is so much. Totally. So much. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. Same. So going Same. back, you had your folder which had the big red sticker on it saying not to give you this exact medication they gave you, which then went on to kill you and they had to Mm -hmm. resuscitate you. My brain can't help but ask, why did this happen? Because it was such an obvious thing not to give it to you. Do you wonder why you had to go through this experience? Or was people talk about exit points, which are times in your life where you get the option to leave, to potentially die. We have a few, few of them in our lifetime. Do you think that maybe this was an exit point? Or why did this happen, do you think? Uh, I, I think uh, it was asked, I think it was almost like decided I'm going to have a near-death experience at this time of my life and it will have an impact to me throughout my life until even now. And it's, it's, it's changed me. It's uh, from a, a, a lad of 14. I think I was quite mature anyway, but I, yeah. and, but I kind of uh, had a certain attitude, a certain consciousness that I was, I'm very caring uh, already. Mm. But it's like twice as much now, and I want to help people. Um, it's just snowboard and snowboard and snowboard that I really want to, mm. you know, get to help as many people as possible to be aware mm. of what it's all about. So I think, yeah, I think I was taken out, and I think what was like told to me, Paul, yeah, we took you out of here because of we want to show you, and it's going to impact you. You know, I think it was like a lesson to um, bring yeah. back and then continue. Because I think they knew that I was going to choose to come back almost because, again, right. 14. Uh-huh. So I think, you know, I think there is the, still an element of free will, uh-huh. but also an element of, uh, you know, it's going to happen again, you know, because I'm going to get reincarnated. And I thought, you know, well, I'm, I've come this far. Let's, go on, let's, cut, let's carry on the journey. And yeah. uh, so I felt like it's going to, I was, I'm going to come back into this body again or similar body at least let's let's just carry on shall we and uh, let's get you know let's do what i need to do in this life mm. 
Um, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to help because I, I feel I feel there's some um, in, in my mind. I mean, I'm never wrong, but I feel that there's some good energies and there's bad energies. And the bad energies are quite uh, strong, and they're trying to like tire people. Uh, you know, it's it's the, it's like uh, almost like um, you know, it's a it's a low energy sometimes in in in, in the earth. Mm. energy mm. i feel and we're just we're trying to give the good energy back trying to get mm. energy back in and mm. that's what i'm trying to do trying to just give a bit of energy good energy good energy good energy out there that's what i'm trying mm. to do from what i can feel it's definitely happening so totally okay. carry on on that path okay. um so you did mention there very briefly you chose this do you think that people who have a near-death experience choose that at what point are you talking about before we come into this body before we incarnate um well so sorry i mean i might listen so is it like uh, i chose to have these funded for the body or the death experience or both well i guess at the end of the day both of those things do you think that we choose our path and choose the lifetime that we're going to have the people that we have it with yes i i I think um what i what i feel it is um it's mapped out a little bit um Uh because um and i think it's like how, how come I saw myself driving? How come I saw myself in 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 Russia? And also, I see myself. Sorry to say, I will say it. Uh, old, older, and uh, in a bed, loved ones around me, and I'm dying. Oh, um, you saw that. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I have a vision of that, but also I had a vision of other things that uh, that that prevented me as well. It's um, can I describe it? It's almost like. Um, have you ever heard of Anthony Peake? Um, uh, he's in, in the UK, Anthony Peake. Um, no. But um, we, we did a, sorry, I'm, I'm going to digress a little bit, but I did a, okay. an interview. Is that, yeah, I got a, 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 a planet, a I can't get words out. I've got a YouTube channel uh, yeah. called United Planet. And uh, so we go out and also interview people like your good self. And, oh, and we interviewed a gentleman called Anthony Peake, and he's like an author of like consciousness. And he mm-hmm. talks about the daemon, and it's like uh, the daemon is like the the soul of us, and we're the avatar, and the, the daemon is trying to steal steer us uh, in this mm-hmm. game that we're in, like this holographic game. And I still feel like it is almost holographic because yeah. atoms, atoms, everything's atoms. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I feel that's almost holographic, and um, so. Yeah, so I, I've gone. I've chosen some bad things in my life, and as I'm doing those bad things, a little daemon in me saying, "Now nah, you don't want this anymore," and I'm like telling me, instructing me to do it, and so I stopped doing what I was doing, and and I and, and then so it may then carry on to other directions. So things are telling me in my brain go to different directions. So yeah. I think there is some free will, and then there's also a little thing that's telling you. This is not good for you, and you're going off to different directions. So I think there's a bit of both elements there going off. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. you, so you think you chose your life with spina bifida? You chose to have all these surgeries. That was part of your lifestyle. Because I know yeah. when I came out of my NDE, I felt like everything was perfect, even though I was in a body that didn't work and things didn't look too good. I had so much peace that everything was exactly how it was meant to be. Yeah. And I hear this a lot from people, and I just think, I think we do choose these circumstances. Not yeah. so much whether we choose an NDE. Like for me, I feel like that was an amazing gift. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I do believe that I chose the illness, I chose the experience that I had. Yes. And, you know, I embrace it. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know, I know I might get to people uh, with disabilities being a bit upset with that that words because some some people saying why why would I chose that life you know why oh, you know definitely. you know I can understand that I mean I, there was uh, one footballer in a, in in the UK that uh, was really quite famous and he basically said the same thing and he got slated he yeah. he had to lay, lie low for a while because there's so many people up in up in arms about his words yeah. but I can't say I from I mean from my I'm not famous like him but I felt I mean my own words I'm thinking like poor guy you know he's yeah. saying what he felt and he got slated for it 
Yeah, so, I think also uh, yeah. we need to remember that everybody's journey is different. Our tolerance, our pain tolerance, our ability to deal with what's going on from us for us is different. And so if we take two people who are going through the exact same thing, we can't assume that it's the same for both of them. For one yeah. person, that might be the hardest thing. They're depressed, they're angry, they're upset, they're in pain. And the other person is going, well, I'm going to brace this. This is great. And, you know, I, I don't think that we can say that I feel very lucky and very privileged, but I'm aware that there are a lot worse situations out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all feel things differently. So, yeah, that poor guy, that would have been really hard for him. Absolutely. Yeah, I, th I yeah. felt it. And, that's, and that's, that's the reason why I wanted to bring that to people's attention as well, to, you know, help kind of act the, 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 the words a little bit and try and yeah. support his words. And, um, yeah, and basically, I think I, I, I agree with you. I think there are certain um, levels of this, I think I, I've, mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. By the way, I'm not, no, I'm not no. saying that. I'm, I'm no. saying that um, I've reached the level where I am in in many reincarnations to to be where I am in my. I think my DNA, uh, or I think I think DNA DNA has like a certain personality traits um, yeah. to give me like the levels I have of calmness or, or mm. um, matureness. Mm. I think. Or is it my legs? I don't know. But yeah, I I, I always have like this like personality trait of of such, and um, mm. yeah, I don't know. Mm. Mm, <laughs> definitely. But I agree. I, yeah. I, I do. I do agree with what you're saying, though. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think we're on the same page. Yeah, you've talked yeah. a lot about how you want to come back. You want to help people, and even you just mentioned, you know, you want to share the message and help people who might resonate with what this guy's saying or whatever situation you're in. Do you think that comes from your NDE? Did you come back with any feeling of purpose or specific task you had to do? Or was that sort of built in? And I mean, 15 is quite young, isn't it? So I had mine at 12 and people ask me this question. I go, well, I was only 12. It's really hard to say how I was going to go on. But I, from very early on in life, I was quite determined, dedicated. I wanted to help the world. Do you think yours came from a specific purpose or was it always there? Um, no, I think the, the near-death experience gave me more of a purpose. Mm. Yes, I, I was always the, the calm and happy, go-lucky kind of guy. Uh, you mm. know, but I never really had a, the purpose. And even at 14, I still, I wouldn't say I had a purpose, but eventually in the sense of like wanting to change the world, I mean, I saw a lot of things that confused me as a kid. Uh, mm -hmm. Thinking like, uh, why is it, you know, we can print off money, but then there's so much poverty. I mean, how, mm -hmm. why can't you just go to a bank, print more paper off, give it to, you know, southern people in Africa? And it, it didn't make any sense to me. A lot of, you know, this, this banking system still doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so it's basically, yeah, I, I always thought that I'm not understanding this world very well. And yeah. uh, oh, I, felt, I felt a bit like outside my box a little bit. I felt like I wasn't, it's was like round, round circle into a square hole type of thing, you know, uh -huh. that kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. And, that, you know, and especially being, being like not really associating, associating well with uh, teachers or, or, or friends, or strange friends, you know, school children. Uh, I felt out in general. I was yeah. very a loner uh, as a kid. Um, more adulty in my in my head. Um, yeah. So I, I wanted to help people. As a group, like twenty, I started to then really get into it, thinking like I want to help people. Um, and my 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 first job was more like to teach people on um, on music because I was I was learning uh, the organ. I was an organist. Uh, my, mm -hmm. my my first job was an organist. So I started wow. teaching people, and uh, but I connected with people i wanted to help people with music get enjoy enjoy you know that was my purpose it wasn't just to necessarily do a job in music or but just to enjoy music you know that was my yeah. goal for them nothing you know don't don't take it as like a i must do exams i must i must i must no i want to enjoy music that was my wish to them so that was my first real job then the next job i was doing was to work in job center uh, oh, helping people yeah. find jobs, and again, I wanted to help people to change 
lives and uh, yeah. that's, that's, and that's what I'm, I'm doing now I, 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 I stepped out of that role um, the role changed unfortunately so I came out of it but now I'm back into that role again I'm helping people with uh, with finding, finding work again yeah. so that's, that's that's great for me you know I'm helping I, people yeah I love it because it's a common theme again with near-death experiences is the regular jobs or the jobs about chasing something no longer requ- suit us we often find experiences in service-based jobs or careers or where they want to help people or they want to make a difference rather than get up a corporate ladder or promote a product or something like that you know there's a little bit of both and I'm not saying that it goes either way it's one or the other but it's a common thing you know a lot of people end up being counsellors or psychologists or like you working in a job centre helping people it might be it could be anything anything at all a nurse a yeah anyone who wants to help people so it's a, an interesting thing that goes along with that um you've seen glimpses into your future mm-hmm. how does that affect the way that you live now so you've seen yourself on your deathbed mm-hmm. well, that was I think this so. lifetime yeah you think so yeah does that, <laughs> um, yeah like do you live with more do you take more risk are you you know, kind of thinking, well, this one's in the bag. It's not going to kill me. I'm not going to die because I've seen that scene. Does it change no. your life at all? No. I, again, I, it's the free will situation. Um, yeah. I think certain things are uh, prescribed and certain things are not. I mean, I saw um, uh, on, on, on a personal note, this is quite uh, raw, but I will say to you, um, when I was in my 30s, I was drinking too much. And that's the reason why I, I, I changed my path. But I saw myself uh, in in the situation in, in this particular house that was not this one, next the, the house previously, um, and dying because mm. of, of of that, and and that that sort of then changed me. So because I saw that 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 view in my in my near death experience, I saw that moment again. It flashed back. Again. It was almost like a in one moment in my, in my life in, in that thirties age, something flashed in front of me like a memory of near-death experience and seeing myself there in my house, thinking like, yeah. oh my goodness, I, I, I'm going to, if I don't do something about it, I'm going to, you know, mm. and, and, and here kind of thing. And so mm. I finished doing what I was doing. Um, mm. You know, I, you know, I, I reduced anyway, put it that way at that time, I reduced, but I, I but, uh, you know, so yeah, and that's what basically I, I changed. So I think there is again, matter of free will, but then there's also like the little demon in the, in the game saying like, yeah, ah, yeah. be careful. And, and I suppose that you can't, I suppose you can't trust what you saw because like you said, it's changed. And so that scene you saw of the deathbed, that might change based on your actions before that time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's an interesting one. It's really great. I've so enjoyed talking to you, Paul. In terms of the regression, I would love to hear, if you go ahead with that, how that all goes. I have heard stories of people that have remembered specific things from regressions. I've also heard of a lot of times when it's almost like we're not allowed to remember some of the information that we get on these experiences. So I'd love to hear about that. I'm very happy. I will put, actually, for our listeners as well, if you're thinking about doing a regression or anything like that, I can put some links in there. It's okay. another topic which I think we could talk about for a long time. And perhaps after you've done it, we can actually do that and talk about whether mm-hmm. anything came up or anything like that. But, Paul, I just want to acknowledge your story, acknowledge your huge heart, because that's been so evident for me, just how much you want to help, how much love you have. and Thank you for being so open about your experiences. My oh, final question you. for you is how are you today in terms of health? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Um, I'm uh, still uh, struggling. I'm getting worse with age, uh, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I've now got uh, good old arthritis. I don't know who uh, Arthur is, but uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he's playing with my knees. Um, but uh, yeah, so arthritis is not good, and then I've also developed uh, ulcers. Uh, I've oh, got ulcers on my leg and, and yeah. foot, and, and so I ended up in hospital recently uh, with it. Uh, I was in hospital 22 days. I had oh, uh, wow. osteo- osteomyelitis, bone bone infection. Yeah. yeah, wow. So it wasn't good, but uh, put a lot of things into perspective, and um, 
thinking like I really need to uh, do more talking to yourself and, and do more promoting because I want to help people so much and that, that's what yeah. gave me time to think what do I want and uh, it did and that's why I'm and that's why I connected to you. I saw yeah. I saw what you did on, on previous uh, interviews, and I thought I wouldn't want to talk to you. And, oh, uh, great! So, so thank you. You know. Uh, no, I thank you. I'm so grateful. I mean, even as we're talking, you're still talking about your biggest challenge. You just spent 28 days in hospital. You're making jokes about your arthritis. You've got a smile on your face, and I just think it's amazing. I think you've got something really incredible there, and. I want to again say thank you. So Paul Northridge, thank you so much for sharing your story and I'd love to hear more further down the track. There's a couple of things I can tell you about. Um, I've got a book out. Um, it's on Amazon and it's uh, obviously my name, Paul Northridge, and then it's Walk of Life, Feet on the Ground. And so that's, that's my book and it's on Kindle as well. Uh -huh. And uh, you can also find me on YouTube and it's uh, Unite Planet. Wonderful. We will definitely put those links in. Um, definitely have a look at all of that. Paul, Paul Northridge, thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. You're brilliant. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the Let's Talk Near Death podcast show. If you've enjoyed it, please share it with your friends. Tell people about it. I'd love to get these messages out there. Don't forget you can also pick up your VIP access pass for additional content at patreon.com forward slash Kirsty Salisbury. You can connect with us via the Let's Talk Near Death Facebook page and I look forward to catching you for another episode soon.